Hello, my wonderful people. Hope you guys have had or had a great weekend. I'm gonna do a quick video. I know I always say that, so I don't even know why I say that because it just turns out to be a lie. Um, husband just left to go get the oldest, so I had a few minutes, so we'll see if we can bust this out. Pepe is here. He's taken over my thrift store find of 2016 and he's chilling he's hanging out so i think he's waving and saying hi um lots to cover racks and whips and ffos shout outs um so let's do shout outs first um New floss tuber Claire Seaside Stitcher um, is her channel, and she has some just gorgeous pieces. Um, a ton of Christmas FFOs. There's Wally. We've he got back from the groomer a little bit ago. Wally, you say hi. Wally, you say hi. Oh, thank you. That's love. All kinds of stuff here this morning. Um, rabbit trail. Um, I woke up, decided, hey, Christmas stuff is put away. Um, the spring bug must have bit me early. Shampooed carpets this morning here in my room. Oh. Okay. Shh. Shh. Um, Wally got off to the groomer, so busting stuff out today. Anyway, Claire Seaside Stitcher, she has some great Christmas FFOs that she shows. Um, she has this Christmas village piece that she framed and it's just gorgeous. So go check her out. Um, big, big love and hugs to Miss Michelle Rudy. Um, you guys know her as Farm Girl. Um, if you didn't see on Stitch Mania the other day, she had posted that um, their dog, Ben, had passed away. And when she had showed him in her videos, I just fell in love with him. Big dog, huge lover of big dogs, obviously. So, Michelle, my heart just goes out to you. Um... And um, it's never easy losing a pet, um, seeing that there's lots of us that count them as family members, and it's a huge void when they are gone. And um, i just totally thinking of you guys right now. So let's see. Thrift store finds Wally. Okay. Thrift store finds, um, again, totally lucked out this week. And I thought this was like something special. I was gonna make it into, I wasn't sure, should I wear this as a necklace or what? And then I see that it was on the chain. There was a little tag and it showed who the maker was and it was just Claire's, the store with where you can go get your ears pierced and all the girly stuff. So, Obviously, this isn't anything special, but it's like one of the old, old mirrors. Um, there's a little scratching on it, but I thought it was super cute. So I think I'm going to make it a needle minder for myself. I'll attach it to the mirror part and then I'll have the back. So got that. Found a Paula Vaughn book, hardcover, never used. So I'll look through this. I have a ton of magazines and whatnot that I need to put up on my Amazon store. Um, I do handmade at Amazon, and so technically whatever I put up on there needs to be handmade by me, which it is so far. Um, but I have put up some booklets and some books as well that you guys have bought. Um, but I've been having problems with the people over at Stash Unload. 
and um, so yeah, be looking for possibly this book going up there in a couple days, and then I'll have all kinds of magazines and um, charts I've come across that I know I'm not going to stitch at all. Also found for a dollar one of the um, hoops. I've never used one like this, like the spring. So I'm kind of interested in seeing how that works. I have all kinds of the plastic blue ones. I have some of the metal ones as well, or the wood ones. Um, but yeah, I was interested. I was really surprised to come across one of these spring ones. Hi, everyone. And then I think the win of the day, they had all their collectibles on 50% off, which I did not know, and they had this for five bucks. $2.50, people. It is hand embroidered, um, and the back is falling apart. And so I peeled, this was already hanging down, um, but the four digit number that's written is 9511 which also, 5911, which also matches up here in pencil. So I don't know if that was kind of like when you go get your clothes at like the lawn, um, dry clean, like a number. I don't know if that correlated, um, but it's written on the back of this wood mounting, the 5911. And what I looked and saw what kind of fabric, it's almost like a satin, like a black satin that this was um, embroidered on. But I saw it and loved it. Um, there's a sticker here on the back that it was framed in Winnipeg. I don't even know if that's gonna show up at all, who knows. Um, the little gallery in Winnipeg. So yeah, I'm gonna hang this up in my wall of stitching finds and saves. Um, that is it for that. Um, FFO, you know I gotta finish. I usually have a finish every single video. Um, and as soon as it's done, I have to frame it. You guys know that. The only two pieces that I do not have framed are the two parts of the Barbara Anna series, A New World. There are five of those total. I have stitched two of them, um, and I have them hanging up in my closet. Um, I'm going to wait until all five parts are stitched and then I'm going to get them all framed by me, of course, um, and all the same frames. I guess I could get frames now, um, because I think if I had them, my OCD would be like, hey, you need to fill those frames and get them out of here. And so then I would stitch the three remaining left. Um... So those are the only two pieces that I have complete that I have not framed. Everything else I have framed. So I completed, runny nose, itchy nose, Birds of a Feather, Remember Me. Here's what it looks like. Of course I had to do it because of Pepe after I got done with um, these old bones, he wanted me to stitch him another piece. And I started this on 1114 and I finished it on 1-8. So just a couple days ago, I finished it on that sun on Sunday, went to Hobby Lobby on next day, got a frame, simple black frame, nothing crazy. Um, don't want the frame to take away from the piece. To me, a frame should complement the stitched piece and should not distract from the stitched piece. Um, now if a piece 
that is stitched is simple and maybe monochromatic or then I would do something more crazy, ornate, elaborate. So um, I just decided to go with a simple black frame on this um, and frame that up. This was a nine by 12. Put it on one of the acid-free sticky boards, ironed it, laid it down, lint rolled it, and use the glass as a template marked around that the same was here and here with one of these small sewing um, measures same on the top and bottom put down the glass hold it use the pen cut it out slap it in now this one was just the empty frame usually i'll buy them with the glass and then that back piece as well, um, but they didn't have any simple black frames like that. So I was searching around the house trying to figure out well, what am I gonna use to, um, to back it. And you know what works great are those priority boxes from um, the post office that you can just go in and get for free. Yeah, I highly recommend that. So I took one made it and cut it out and box taped it in. Ghetto as hell, I know. People are shaking their heads because they're disgusted with my framing technique and other people are like, you're freaking genius. So there you go. Oh, I did have to pay for the glass because it didn't. Um, it was just an empty frame, but I love it. Pepe was, oh God, he was a, I'll turn it sideways so you can see. That was intense. Now the white is not the white of the fabric. It is stitched, um, at least he is. Now over here, the dirt, that is not just the dirt is stitched, um, but the whole coffin part is solidly stitched. Great reason, a great, great example of why I will never do a hate. Love the houses, how colorful they are. Love the trees. Um, the witch is just great. I posted this on Stitch Mania and um, good old Pemberley, so funny, hi Pem, um, suggested that it needed to be altered to look at me, uh, look like me. Um, so if I ever decide to stitch this again, um, she needs to be wearing sequined boots, a shorter skirt and more cleavage, so. Yeah, but no, I love her. The cat is just great. I'm gonna see. So the cat is stitched and then the hair um, all around. And I wasn't sure when I was stitching that in if I was gonna like it, but I absolutely love it. Um, so I have this in my dining room. Um, we kind of have like, it was inserted, like the wall is inserted in and I have it on the ledge um next to the black raven if you saw on stitch mania piece so it's gonna stay there just propped up against the wall love it erwin loves it as well um so yeah i was stitching this and this reminded me of a um, conversation i had had with a girlfriend of mine about of course death and we were talking one day, would you like to be buried or cremated? And I said, well, I don't know. And she's like, well, I'm claustrophobic because who says that when you die, I mean, it's lights out. Who knows what it is? Um, I'm not religious at all. Um, my kind of feeling is that when you die, you know, lights out. Who knows? I could be totally proven wrong when my day comes. Um, She's kind of the same way, but um, she's like, you know, when you die, who says that the lights turn out and maybe you're totally still conscious. Um, you're, you know, maybe trapped in your body in some way. And she says she's claustrophobic, so she would not want to be buried. Um, and I said, well, then you would be cremated. And she says, no, because then I would be 
conscious of when they put me in the fire to cremate me. And then she's like, then I'll be claustrophobic again because they put you in a plastic bag and then throw you in a box. So she's totally confused on what she wants to do. So I told her, um, I'll pay, we'll all chip in like her family and me and we'll just send her to a taxidermist and they can just stuff her and we can ship her around from different houses um, and kind of each have our time with her. So these are the conversations I have with my friends, okay? Don't judge me, whatever. Um, so yeah, so happy that I got Remember Me finished. Marked that off the list. I didn't start anything new. Um, let me pull my card over. See, I have four, four whips going on. Um, and so I'd like to get, I should have, I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. Cause I should have put these on before I started the video. I have four whips. Um, I want to get maybe one or two of them done before um, I start something new, which my something new would probably be, be a Barbara Anna piece from A New World. So, um, I have Nightmare, have not touched it. Maybe I've added a couple stitches in. Um, I guess my new year, new start was Rome, Afternoon in Rome by Country Cottage Needleworks. And have only done the fountain. I am doing this on 32 count star sapphire. Oh, and I did, backtrack, I did Remember Me on 32 count fairy dust. It's not white. I guess it's kind of like a cream, very light cream. Um, so yeah. So Afternoon in Rome, that's all I've gotten on it so far. Love the fabric color on this, absolutely. Um, let's see, my Nora Corbett piece. I started this on 1226. And this is where I am at. Love it, absolutely love it. Love the colors. Um, this is a bird series. I think there are six in the series. Um, and this is Blue Monarch Flycatcher. Um, there's also a hummingbird one, which I may do for my grandparents' anniversary this year. Um, they've been married well over 60 years, so um, I plan on doing that. So I'm going to do the bird. This is what it looks like. I do plan on doing the bird first and then going back and doing the black filigree detail. There are um, a few beads, which I probably will do, um, and those will be my first introduction to beading. Um, close the door. I'm doing a video, give me time. I don't want to be interrupted. So yeah, I'll show you guys, because you guys gave me all kinds of um, love on my boots. And Danielle, you said that the woman in the magazine looked super uncomfortable and that I'm the only one that wears heels during stitching, which is totally true. So, there you guys go, the boots. Love these. So, yeah, Natasha, don't be jealous. I'll send you these. Um, <laughs> another piece I am working on, ink circles, um, the birds and bees. Thank you guys so much for recommendations on thread. 
I decided to try out the DMC lines of the, their variegated floss, and I am so happy that I did. Um, I'm using 69. Haha, <laughs> laugh jokes. Okay. Um, reds and burgundies goes to cream and kind of like like a burnt orange kind of color. Um, I'm doing this on 40 count de bloom. And I got a little Penelope with me. Hold on, let me move my trick or treat because it's always Halloween here. Okay. So this is where I am at. Yes, I'm showing the charts, not enough. Not stitching this in any sort of particular pattern. Now you could, because there are so many little loops, um, but I decided I'm not gonna be that anal about the colors. Um, so when I start off a new thread, if I see that you know, I haven't done any red, dark red in a particular area. I'm doing a video. You need to give me a few minutes. No, I'm going to say hi to you. No. The door is locked. Stop, Cal. Locked. So, um, I just kind of start, if it's dark or light, wherever it hasn't been used in a while, and just kind of go from there. So, um... Yeah, loving this fabric as well. This is the DeBloom 40 count. Um, so I kind of work on that when I don't really want to think about stitching. Like I can kind of zone out. I mean, I know you still have to pay attention. Um, but I've never had a problem with counting. Um, the frog has never really been... my house a whole lot and if it he is then it's just usually just a few stitches it's not like an entire section um but I'm loving how that is turning out um so those are my whips let me go through what else do I have hmm shout outs um, we're planning to do Disneyland early February sometime, so I'm so excited about that. Um, we took the boys last year, um, but I'm excited to go to kind of check out the gift stores more and just see what I can use as needle minders. And, um, I would never buy one of their, um, cross-stitch patterns, but I'm interested just to go and see um how much they cost and the different ones and if they have any stitched ones at Disneyland um finally got off my butt and decided it was time for me to get back into doing some sort of volunteer work um you know getting not being able to work for the fire department anymore you know, I really got into a slump and I kind of went through like a stage of mourning. I was angry and then I was, you know, super down and I took it personal, even though they did get rid of me for my person, you know, for personal reasons against me. Um, so, you know, I've enjoyed time off and have gotten a ton of stitching in. And um, now that the holidays are over, I realized that I need to kind of start doing something the youngest will be in kindergarten in the fall, and then both of the boys will be in school full time. And so decided I need to volunteer again. I need to get out of the house and kind of start doing something for me. So put in an application for a city next next to us um, for their fire department program and heard back. And so I need to submit a little more information and kind of get the ball rolling. So I hope to be doing what I loved. I really loved it. Um, 
for another city. So, and those that are new to my videos and uh, maybe haven't watched the past ones, I volunteered for the fire department here um, in Arizona. And I was part of a group of individuals that when a murder happens or a suicide, a death, whatever, fire, um, pediatric kid codes, deaths, um, or anything, um, rapes, domestic violence uh, situations, we are dispatched with the fire department and with the police department, and we help the people deal with the situation, kind of hold their hand in a, in a sense and tell them, you know, what their next steps are going to be. Um, either, you know, filing a strangulation or a um, protection of um, protection. You know what I'm talking about. I'm, oh, I'm spacing on it. Order of protection or everything from calling the mortuary. So I absolutely loved doing that. I loved the excitement of it. The what is this call kind of gonna bring? Um, I've kind of always considered myself one running to the situation, problem, crisis, rather than running away. So um, I really look forward to getting back into that. So hopefully I'll be able to give you guys a little more information in a few weeks on that. Um, got a beautiful, beautiful rack from a deer floss tuber. Um, not sure if I should name her. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with no, but we all know who she is. Trust me. Um, she just absolutely has a heart of gold and so sincere. And um, damn kids, anybody want them? And um, she just totally made my day. So she sent me some fabrics that. This, um, love, I think, so this is Color Cascades, which I've been looking to order because my resolution for this year was to try some more hand-dyed fabrics. This is Wicked Garden. Please, people. I am thinking Beasties on here. Courtney Collection, because it's a monochromatic, I'm thinking this. I have not tried it because I'm afraid if it matches, if it's the right count and the right size, I'm gonna just start it. So I'm thinking beasties for this. Um, this is a fantasy dyed fabrics, Joblin 32 count. Um, it's like some blues and greens and limes. Um, actually, is there a name on this? It's not but I love that. That's actually pretty true. Um, this is another Color Cascades fabric, this gorgeous blue that also has some modeling as well. Um, and this hot pink, it's called Dreams Color Cascade. Um, now, I am not a pink person, says the person with the pink cell phone cover, as my husband gives me crap for. Um, my new lipstick, kind of, that's pink. Um, but I love this, and I think because it's so bright and loud hot pink that I love it, that's why. So I gotta definitely find something for this to go on. But um, thank you so much. Again, I was shocked by what you'd sent and I love it. So that is it. Um, I'll wrap it up. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Pepe and I will just be hanging out and maybe I can finally get some stitching done. Haven't done any of that today. And um, yeah, any questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. Subscribe, like. 
I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.